So every crab pot needs a new zinc every year. And the place I buy zincs is Miller's Island Crab Pot here on Miller's Island. James runs the place now. He's a good friend of mine. And they're just really good people. They're a good family. And their family has started and run Miller's Island Crab Pot here for, I don't even know how many decades, but a very, very long time. Him and his uncle still build pretty much all the crab pots. It's that time of year. CJ's got his whole rig pretty much done, it looks like. Ready for paint. No need to break your back any earlier than you got to. We got the rest of crabbing season. CJ will never forgive me if I bring his crew back broken. You're a loner tool, Chris. <laughs> you didn't take the insurance policy out? No, I didn't, I didn't get the renter policy. Got a couple new crab pots to try from James. A little different wire here, see how they hold up. So pretty much all the crab pots are zinced, ready to be painted. There's quite a few of them here. They just keep going. Some over here, some over there, and another pile over there. And there's even some over here. So zinking the crab pots is a very important step. It needs to be done every year. We're just putting a sacrificial anode in the crab pot so that the steel doesn't rust into nothingness. Because this good high quality Chinese pot metal that these crab pots are made out of these days doesn't hold up quite like the old American steel. I got crab pots that are like 10 years old that I bought my first year crab and that are still in better shape than some that I bought like three years old since we got this influx of China wire. I'm actually ecstatic to see that these pots are pretty much all zinced and ready to be painted. So the next step, we'll lay tarps all out here and I'll order some paint and we will paint the whole rig, load the trailer. We're we ready to get going crabbing. Spring is a very, very, very busy time for crabbers and we're not making any money. We're just spending it. In addition to all the things I have to do, I'm getting a roof put on my house. Luckily, I got Thomasville Homes, which is a local company to me, to come put a roof on my house. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> these guys do not mess around. Out of the truck, on the roof and tearing it apart before they even parked the trucks. You know what? Their crew doesn't even look like they're gonna steal like the copper out of my air conditioner. Every year I have to get the crab boat hauled up because it needs maintenance on the bottom. It needs zincs, which are like sacrificial anodes, which keep the running gear from rotting apart and falling off the boat. And it needs new bottom paint. I paint it every year, zinc it every year, give the whole haul kind of a once over to make sure that she's gonna be good to go and get the living snot beat out of her for the next seven months. Although every year it seems like I run over something and have to get it hauled out and cut something out of the wheel. So we're going to McCluskey's in Edgemere. Mr. Mark said he'd haul me out. So I've never been hauled out there before. With the tight schedule that I have right now, that's the only place it was really gonna work. And I like Mr. Mark, super nice guy. I appreciate him being willing to help me out here on very short notice. We have a little bit of a boat ride and it is blowing today and it is freaking cold. It's 43 blowing like 15, 20 miles an hour out of the north. It's gonna be a hell of a boat ride. And I also just remember that I'm not sure if the boat has any fuel in it. That's a problem that I have to deal with when I get to the marina. Nice. Just enough. I'll be so excited to get this thing clean. It's just so hard to keep a scum line off a boat around here. Tried everything on this boat and I cannot seem to keep a scum line off of her. Or see how nasty it is up there? That happens in no time. It's a solo mission today. We're either gonna make it there, or make it to the bottom, depending on how hard the wind's blowing. We're off. I always get a lot of questions whenever this is in videos about what this is. And this is steering. So in my boat, this does the steering. It's just a valve, you push it, and you go to port, which is left, pull it, and you go to starboard, which is right. This is how you put the boat in gear, and then this is how you do the throttle. So if this were a car, this is your steering wheel, this is your gas pedal, this is your gear selector, and we don't need brakes, because brakes are for quitters. The tide is out pretty far today. It's been blowing bad and blow the water right out of the creek. I know over at the marina I'm going to, it, the water is super skinny. It's skinny on a high tide, and right now I can see rocks and places there shouldn't be. That trick works every time, by the way. Yeah, you, there should be underwater, like a foot underwater. Also, shout out to uh, Beefcake Beef Jerky Flair over there for sending me some jerky to try. It's actually really good stuff. And if it's for free, it's for me. I don't mind getting the boat hauled out because I just like checking the box that we've done it, but before you get it hauled out, you're always a little, eh, what are you gonna find? Well, I've hauled boats out and found cracks and the metal things that are destroyed, and it's never cheap and it's never easy to fix. No news is good news when you get your boat hauled. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I just am getting rusty because I've been off the water for a couple months and I didn't read the wind right, but it's pretty slick calm right now, which is suspicious. I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Also, if you haven't checked it out, check out these sweatshirts, man. Please don't let this flop. I'm trying to move some of these. Dark season eyes, part of our collection. They're awesome. They're like fleece, vintage duck camo, super sick. You can get them, link, whatever. You can find it. There's old Fort Howard Hospital. I believe that used to be its 
tuberculosis hospital and allegedly it's haunted and all that stuff. But I mean, have you ever heard of an abandoned hospital that there was a rumor that it was haunted? Somewhere over there by the hospital is North Point State Park. I think that that's actually stuff that they use to make a sheet rock. Who's driving? Nobody's driving. All right, hopefully we won't hit the thing. Hold on. There we go. I told you it works every time. Uh, that's power plant, Cold Pier's next to it. You got the Key Bridge, Fort Carroll out there, Port of Baltimore over there, and all kinds of stuff. Fort Smallwood Park over there, uh, Revere Beach, Ooh, Port of Pasadena, I'm falling. Geez, I really gotta clean this cabin up before crabbing season starts. It's getting, it's embarrassing in here. That's my least favorite bird in the world. Those are called Cormoran. If there's one thing the state could do to bring back rockfish population, it's to get rid of some of these cormorants. They're an invasive species and they're federally protected now in the Chesapeake, which is so crazy. I have seen cormorants eat more fish than I could ever possibly dream of catching in a day. The best fishermen in the entire bay. They are greedy, completely unchecked. So they eat, I'm telling you, millions of baby rockfish. I have seen them dive down in pitch black water and come up with rockfish this big and do it until they can barely even fly anymore. Nobody's gonna listen, but if you wanna get bring back rockfish, Get rid of some cormorants. Also, if you go in Old Road Bay and you go back to like somewhere right back in here, there's a really cool little hidden gem. Ice cream shack and snow cone shack in a marina called Gaunt's Marine. It is so stinking good. If you look them up on Facebook, like they make all kinds of crazy like ice cream milkshakes. You know, the ones women like taking pictures with, you know what I'm saying? They got like the whole freaking candy bar, you know, jammed in it. It's like an awesome date spot. And it's a sweet little like hidden joint back here in Old Road Bay. You see here, we're doing 12 knots. Well, this boat really ought to do like 15, 16. Which I know isn't a crazy amount, but you're losing three knots. And that's because stuff grows on the bottom and it slows you down. We're here, beauty place, isn't it? Look at all them boats. Usually all these slips are hopping, but it's off season right now. So most people have their boats up on, on land. In Maryland, we don't really leave them in the water all winter. I do, just because it's hard to find a place to put mine in the winter time. Usually, uh, guys will get the boats hauled up, so they don't have to worry about them freezing. And hopefully, I can do that next year if I have a place to put it. I'm gonna just put it in my front yard. I don't think my neighbors will mind. My neighbors are watching this. Don't be surprised if we get a new lawn ornament in the neighborhood. He's gonna have a big, what we call a travel lift that has these slings. Drive the machine out on the pilings, and then lower the slings down into the water, under the water. And then I'm gonna drive the boat over the slings and shut it off. And then he's gonna pick the slings up and he's gonna pick the whole boat up. Hopefully without dropping it. We'll see. Although I think she'd be okay if you did. Although I'm not trying to find out. Ah yeah, so all the usual suspects are here. T's over there. That's a nice boat. Good buddy of mine. This is a travel lift. See how the boat hangs in the slings right there? So Lindsay did pick me up, so she was actually here sooner than I was expecting. She was to be actually honest. on the way before you even told me to leave, so. That is true. We'll see the boat once she's out of the water tomorrow. I gotta get back and check on the guys that are working on crab pots right now. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> looking good, man. We're getting there. Almost done, right? Almost. Very close. I commandeered CJ's helper, Chris, to do pretty much my whole rig this year. I really, really, really appreciate his help. He's doing an awesome job. Chris, I might have to steal you from CJ. You're doing such a good job at this. Uh -oh. <laughs> you say, I know. Said, uh -oh. oh, I thought you said, I know. <laughs> I is better. That's right. Dang, I got home and this roof is like completely done and there's no trace of like anything around. That's crazy. They do not mess around. Well, it's Monday and it's time to go paint the boat. And I'm gonna try to get as much as done as I possibly can because McCluskey's is a little further away from me than any of the marinas here. You gotta pay the toll to get over the key bridge as well. So I'm gonna try to get paint, power washer, zincs, a bunch of other stuff and see how much I can actually get done on this boat in one day because I do not want to hold up Mr. Mark and his lift. I know he's had the boat in the slings uh, all weekend because the weather was bad so that I could power wash it today and I'd like to power wash it before he has to get it out of the slings. So I have to hustle a little bit here. Looks like my crab pot trailer might need a new bearing before we go crabbing again. That's not great. I think we got everything. We'll figure out what I don't have when we get there. There's always something really dumb that I end up not having. Oh yeah, there she is. She's up in the sling. We gotta get rid of this nasty brown scummy stuff that shows up out of nowhere. I have a little trick to try on that part. And then we gotta paint the bottoms. But first we gotta power wash the whole thing. You never really know what the boat's gonna look like on the bottoms. Crawl under there and do a little damage assessment. 
There does appear to be some line in the wheel, which is weird. I don't remember hitting anything, but you know what happens. Got some barnacles. Our zincs are shot. We're gonna replace all these zincs here with new ones. Clean all this junk off of here. Wow, it's kind of bad, honestly. But the bottom actually is super clean. It really does not look bad at all. I didn't even feel that thing wobbling. Ooh, ding in the wheel there. And it's leaking. But that's average, it's standard. One of the absolute best things about this boat is that it does not draw much water at all. I mean, it's got about two and a half foot of draft maybe, which is pretty rare for a boat this big. Definitely helps me get into some spots where other guys can't crab. I'm remembering one of the things that I forgot already is a, a hose. I have a power washer, but no hose. I uh, really appreciate it, Mr. Mark hauling me out on short notice. I want to uh, get this done as fast as I can to free his, free his lift up for him. He has something else. I don't want to be the reason he can't, uh, can't do it. This stuff is magical. On off, it's gonna get rid of all this scum line and all this stuff up the side. It's nasty. It won't come off with anything but that, some sort of like acid or something. You can do the same thing with toilet bowl cleaner, but on off's a little more potent. Just do not get this stuff in your eyes and do not touch it with your bare hands. It will burn you. So you're supposed to cut the stuff with a little bit of water, which I cut it with a little bit, but it doesn't work as well. But if you don't, it does burn worse. So just be very careful not to get it on your skin. You see what it does to a boat hull. I don't know how it works. It's like witchcraft or magic or something. Just a matter of seconds, you can really see it. Went from this to this. That was not a transition. That's really what it looks like. They say the on off is supposed to loosen the barnacles so you can use a scraper like this and scrape them off. I guess it kind of worked, I don't know. The barnacles are like, oh, why is the water spicy? Muriatic acid, that's why. Kind of better than a normal scraper, honestly. As you can see, I have run over some crab pot rope. This is not completely abnormal. That thing spinning really fast on the wheel is gonna cause vibration and that's gonna wear out all kinds of things in the running gear. Really the biggest issue though is braided fishing line in here. And that has caused me more trouble than rope even like this, believe it or not. This is called your strut. And then inside the strut is this barrel, this round tube that you see. Inside the barrel is a bearing. And the bearing is actually just made out of rubber and brass. So it's a brass race, like a sleeve, a tube. And then inside that there's a rubber sleeve. The sleeve has grooves cut down it. When the prop spins like this and it's drawing water this way because the boat's moving forward, water comes in the backside, runs through those grooves. And when this shaft spins with this prop, there's a thin layer of water that the shaft is actually riding on between the shaft itself and the rubber bearing. That's so there's no friction directly on the rubber bearing because you would just immediately wear it out. You have to make sure your shaft alignment is really straight because if it's off kilter, then it's not gonna work properly. Also, if you get braided fishing line in there, that fishing line will actually get up into the bearing and it will delaminate the rubber from the brass race. So it will separate the rubber piece from the rest of it and then the rubber piece will fly up the shaft, which I've had happen like three or four times on this boat, all because of braided fishing line. You usually feel it when you hit crab pot line, but you never know when you hit braided fishing line but people just like kind of have a lot of it and throw it overboard. Well, it's super, super easy to get sucked up in the wheel without even knowing it. And then it'll spit bearings out and whatever else. Cost of things now to get a boat hauled and a braided fishing line has cost me more money than like anything else really when it comes to stupid repairs. And usually if I know that I've hit something, a crab pot, line or buoy, just get into my underwear, get overboard and swim under the boat and cut it out just because vibration is like the number one killer on boats. There's the fins where it comes in in the back. You can see this yellow fishing line was working its way into the bearing and that's what's going to delaminate your rubber bearing. And the reason the crab pot rope is so harmful is because uh, that'll create the thing to shake and then it won't sit evenly in the strut, shake itself loose basically. It'll egg out that bearing and then the bearing will fall out. Or you'll just have slop in your running gear. Your shaft will be knocking back and forth like a sausage down a hallway. <laughs> this much fishing line could cost you thousands of dollars. Something else I noticed is this little crack right here. And this has been repaired before, but it appears to have cracked again. This is stainless. That's really a pain to weld. It's been repaired and like beefed up all around it on the other side. So I don't remember if this crack is just the other side of the weld or if that's new. So another super expensive part of this whole ordeal 
is having to put zincs on the boat. So just like how we have to put them on crab pots, we have to put them on the boat. It does the same thing. It's a sacrificial anode. So zinc is a less noble metal than steel or stainless. Or and stainless will corrode. Don't believe what they tell you. So we have to put these anodes. These flat ones, they go on the rudder for the tabs. And these round ones go around the shaft with the prop on it. But these are not cheap. Look, this was this 12 months ago. If you see your zincs disappearing, it means they're working. This was actually a three inch zinc. So it was one inch, it was about that big. I'd bought the wrong size cause I'm dumb. Since I got the boat out, I'm gonna replace the whole thing cause they get ate up pretty quick. Just this zinc was almost $70 and there is five more that I have to do, so. But it's a lot cheaper than replacing all of this very expensive stuff. These usually use Allen keys. I wasn't sure which size, so I just brought the whole bucket. If you are looking to buy a boat that has been sitting for a while, if the boat has not been hauled out of the water in the past few years, there's a very good chance they've never put zincs on it in the past few years. Everything that's metal under the boat is liable to need to be replaced. So if you have an aluminum outdrive or an outboard motor or something and you it's been left in the water and there's been no sacrificial anode, your outdrive's gonna become that. I advise people against buying boats that have been sitting in the water unattended for a very long time. <laughs> Couple important steps when you're putting zincs on your boat. Where your zinc was, there's gonna be a little corrosion. So you just wanna take like a screwdriver or something like this, rough the surface up and get rid of some of the corrosion. You want a nice clean bonding surface. Ooh, also, while I'm thinking about it, don't paint your zincs because the bottom paint has metal in it. That's what keeps it working. The metal in the bottom paint is going to use the zinc as a sacrificial anode and eat it. <laughs> Trust me, I've done it before. She's mint. Pretty wild though. But this was this less than 12 months ago. This thing's just like mush. It just, it just literally just fell apart. It's paste. You would rather burn up $300 in zincs a year than $10,000 in running gear. You see inside there, that little copper ball? That's the thing that really makes contact with this metal. So when you put this on there, you're actually gonna wanna like whack it with a hammer. Let's see, like that, there we go. Always make sure you tighten them because they always seem to come a little loose after you do that. Right. Left. Oh, I was tightening it. There's also a couple on the strut here. It's technically the shaft and the strut don't really touch. There's insulators in between. It's electrolysis, so it's like electricity. Things need to make contact, if that makes sense. I don't really know anything about electricity. I get my lefts and rights confused still sometimes. Don't cheap out when it comes to zincs either. Just buy the nice ones. Try to save 30 bucks and you'll end up costing yourself 10,000. In there. Done that, buddy. Someone's really angry in the comments right now. They're like, he's talking about this and that. He's not even cleaning the service properly. It's fine. So I do this all the time, every year, same tool. That's why your zincs are so burned up. Nope, looks good. Can't see it from under here. It's all these pancake zincs, and I've never been able to figure out why. I mean, you don't eat them. Since you're down here, just give your nuts a tug and make sure that they're still tight. As you notice, there's two different kinds of paint here, but they're pretty similar. They're both like red, and they're both bottom paint. So there's gonna be a little strategy here where I think I'm gonna take one of them and paint everything that you can see. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take the other one, I'm gonna paint the bottom just in case they're not exactly the same color red. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. I would tell you what kind of bottom paint I use, but I have no idea. This came from an auction at a shipyard. Got a whole pallet of it for like $15. Hopefully enough to last the rest of my life. It's pretty good stuff. I have no idea what it is. You can't read any of the labels. You gotta be careful with this stuff because That'll put you in the bushes there. Sometimes there are certain things that you just don't like to do. One of those things for me is painting. I just do not like to paint. I don't know why. I don't like painting anything. I don't like painting crab pots. I don't like painting the boat. I don't like painting my house. I just find it tedious and I can't do it at like 75 miles an hour. So it doesn't interest me much. I find it to be a little too slow paced for me. Stuff is like peanut butter. Just kidding. If you sand the bottom of your boat, you ain't no crabber, that's for sure. I am glad I remembered to bring my sanding hammer. This job would have been impossible to do without it. Good as used. A little bonus, if you recycle some of the paint chips back into your paint, it's still anti fouling. It's just all gotta go on there, you know what I mean? Look at this, I am not only entertaining you, I am saving you money by the literal boatload. You can thank me later. I gotta do the same thing with two more boats. The Weibo needs all the same work done, especially if I'm gonna try to sell it. The other, boat is the Dora Lynn, the crab sand boat. It needs some kind of paint that looks like bottom paint. I have not come up with a plan yet. I have been so stinking busy. We literally just got back from Florida. That whole debacle with the trailer and this and that, it was right into the race. I'm trying to 
conquer the world and especially on a peanuts budget. So there's two kinds of bottom paint, a blade of paint and then there's paint that's just not a blade of paint. And a blade of paint means that it's kind of chalky and not only does it any, is it any fouling so things aren't supposed to grow, when something does grow, since it's chalky, it's supposed to just fall off when you run the boat. I honestly don't know if this is a blade of or not a blade of paint. We'll say it tastes like a blade of paint. People are gonna say, Luke, that paint job looks like crap. Yeah, I know, it's kind of supposed to. If you spend too much time splitting hairs, painting the bottom of your boat, you ain't no crabber. Can't have a boat costing you dollars. That's how you go broke. So you see how it's got these straps right here? I can't paint under them, obviously. So what we're gonna have to do is get this thing started, block it in a section and move the straps and then re-sling it. And then I can paint behind there. It's a lot of work to paint that little spot, but it's what's gotta happen. On the bright side, we get to do the most satisfying part right now. Peel the tape off. I had to move the paint line up a little bit. The boat's got a little starboard list to her, so gotta adapt and overcome. One time I forgot a piece of tape, like stuck up under the bow for like the whole season. It was there like the next year. I don't know how the heck it stayed on. So this is a trick that I've heard about for years, but I've never tried it. To prevent that nasty round scum line, a lot of guys use this stuff called Mop and Glow. Apparently people put it on their boat, boats and it prevents scum line. No idea if it works. It's like liquid. I thought it was like wax. I don't know if you're like supposed to wipe it off or just leave it on there. Honestly, looks like you're just supposed to leave it on there, but I guess I should read the directions. Not something I'm accustomed to doing. Keep out of reach of children. You've already messed up. Oh, you just dry, it just dries on there. That's even better. That means I don't have to wipe it off. That's my least favorite part about wax. I'm liking it already. It was mop and glow everything, I guess, huh? She looks pretty good, man. She went from looking like Denny's to looking like Hooters, dude. Now we can uh, paint the racing stripe over. And just like that, she's ready to go. Actually, now that I think about it, there's like a hundred more things that need to be done before we can actually go crabbing, but the boat's painted. <laughs> and doesn't look like total crap anymore, so that's a win. Any little like cracks or places that may leak, don't paint those because you want like barnacles to grow in that and it's gonna help seal those hard to get to areas. Also, if you have barnacles, you just wanna paint over the barnacles. And if you're not covered in paint of questionable origin, to really paint your work boat. I love this marina. This place is great. It definitely gives the place where I tie up a run for its money. Pretty much the same kind of place, except for just bigger. I'll tell you what, it's places like this, people like Mr. Mark, that are holding America together right now. Ain't much of this stuff left anymore. Ain't many people like that either. I was gonna say she looks like a million bucks, but she doesn't. She looks like a million views. Hey, like, subscribe, do all that stuff if you want to. If not, I don't really care. I don't really have time to care right now, to be honest, I'm so stinking busy. If you liked it, great. If not, Catch you on the next one, but appreciate you watching.